Hey, what are you doing here? Y'all, why didn't y'all knock? <laughs> so oh, I got chapped lips. Got a little too. I meant to put Vaseline on my lips before we started and I forgot. Do you have your chapstick in your pocket? I do not. Ugh. Hey, thank y'all for watching Rise and Radke. We're on every weekday. Uh, we're live on Facebook at 9 o'clock Central. And then we are on replay, obviously on Facebook, Instagram, and YouTube. If you're already not already following this lady, who is this lady? Who are you? I don't, I honestly, I don't know. Melissa, be sure to follow. Oh, um, I, I really need some chapstick. Um, hi, Uganda. We're so glad that you're here. That's on a name, by the way. It's not like, hey, Uganda, how are you doing? Um, Good morning from Ohio. I knew if I said I needed chapstick and I just sat here quietly, he would eventually get up and go get it. And so that's what I did. Is it wrong? Probably. But I didn't want to get up. Y'all know my policy. I don't want to stand. Um, but my lips are so chapped, so he's going to go get it for me. I told him you would. That's very sweet. This is mm. not what I wanted. This is not the kind I wanted. Too bad. <laughs> for the husbands and wives that are watching us, those who pull their husbands in and make them watch, this is a true moment, though. This is not what I wanted. Remember how I said, I wish I had had Vaseline? Yeah. And then you didn't bring me Vaseline. You brought me this. Yeah. And this is Burt's Bees, and I far firmly believe that this company keeps you addicted to their product. It is good. <gasps> but anyway, what good morning, Oregon. This morning? We've got Oregon and Utah and Uganda and Texas in the house. Um, hi, Vicki Taylor. So good to see you this morning. And Sherry is here. Um, <laughs> Sherry in Texas. Heather... Yay! Heather's going to attempt the grocery store today, and she's got a doctor's appointment. What a big day! It's like the 1950s. We're like, Heather, she's going to the grocery store and the doctor. You know, when I first... She's just doing too much. When I first got into your family, I thought it was funny. We live about 15 minutes out in the country. Uh, it, what? Yeah, 15 minutes from town. Yeah. And so they would always say... We're going into town. And I thought it was funny because it's not like Don't make me laugh when I'm fixing to drink hot coffee. It's not like it's a two-hour drive or something. I mean, but they, we're going into town. Do you need anything? We're going that is a big deal. And I've always thought it was so silly until now. Now I get it. I'm like going, uh, I ain't going into town. Oh, I just texted my cousins the other day who live here on the land with us. And I was like, are any of y'all going into town? If so, can y'all pick something up? And one of their husbands went into town. Of course, he's probably going to die now. But he went into town. And then he brought it over to us. I mean, that's what you do, you know? And he knocked at the door and then walked, he knocked on the door and went straight back to his car. But that's what you do. Um, hi, Melissa Burton from Columbia, Indiana. Shout out to Mama Karen from Mindy Britton. Uh, I wonder why. I hope Mama Karen's okay. Oh my gosh, I hope she's okay. Um, hey, let's see, it's my birthday. Amy Mitchell's birthday today. Today is her birthday. And y'all are, are my gift to myself. That's when you know it's a birthday in quarantine. That's when you know. By the way, I did two cameos yesterday, and I I want to go and check. I when I ever I do a cameo. So if you don't know what a cameo is, a cameo is an app that you can put on your phone. It's called Cameo, C A M E O, and you can look for people, different reality people or authors you can do it or comedians. Too. You don't have to do the app. You can do it online. Okay, and and you you um. Find them, and then you put in a request for them to give you a shout-out, like a personal shout-out. Well, so yesterday, I had to do that I needed to do. And I always like to go and check my reviews to see if they left a review, which they did not. Um, but I'll have all, all these, like, five-star reviews. Do you see this? Well, you just like, sent it. All these five-star reviews. Just I just sent it yesterday evening. But still, I did two really funny ones. And so, if it's ever your birthday or your anniversary or it's your girlfriend's birthday and you know that, she, you know, like, your bestie and you know that she loves me or whatever, I will send you a cameo shout out. And they're really fun. And yesterday, I did two of them and I was really proud of how they turned out. I thought they were funny. You know, it's just me talking to you. But I like getting, I like that a husband sent me one. It was his wife's birthday. He told me about her and the kids and what she likes. That way, I can really make it really personal and fun. Uh, DG missed Tutorial Tuesday yesterday. Where can she find that? Um, you can find it right up my brain. Right in here. You know, that's the thing.
thing. Uh, They're always so funny. They always do so well. People love them. I don't no, they didn't. Them. My last week's was the funniest I'd ever done, and it did not do well, so I'm not doing them anymore. It was the highest, I mean, it was the most use of any of them. Oh, I just dropped my eye like that, and I forgot that I had on mascara. I put on mascara for y'all today. Oh. Did I mess it up? It's kind of... Just tell me, yes or no? It's kind of clumpy. Like, I mean, it's oh. making all the eyelashes stick together. You know what? Your mama's making all the eyelashes stick together. Uh, my mama does occasionally watch. Good morning, Faith G. Love you. <laughs> she's actually mad. If she's watching, she's mad that I call her by her first name. Good mama. Yeah, mama. All right. I'm mama! Right. Well, David, stop, baby. I literally have said to you when we are off the camera, it's too much. And now I'm saying it to you on the camera. It's too much. But I get people telling me they like it. Some people, that's why they tune in. It's literally never been a reason why anyone has tuned in. Well, good morning and welcome to We're Here For You Wednesday. We want to get started because, man, did y'all send in the questions this morning. And I will tell you right now. Y'all have got issues. Oh, they, they, got some... <laughs> they ain't got nothing to brew us. Okay, I want to tell you right now that thank you very much, Kelly Tomlinson. She says, I loved last week's tutorial. It was very good, but it just didn't. You're going to get 1.4 million people watching me cry like a psychopath in the car about the grocery store. And you're going to get like 11,000 that are watching me parent my kids. No, that's messed up. That is wrong. So it didn't, that video did not do as well and that made me mad. What is it? What are you thinking right now? Nothing. Tell me right now. I'm really not thinking anything. Yes, you are. I'm not. And I don't know what to do tutorials about. I'm going to do one about my hair twist. And I'm going to do one about my eyebrows, although right now, not right now, because they've not been plugged. They love your cooking, too. Boy, I made a great dinner last night, you guys. It was so good. Did you, did you give, send it to somebody? Did you give, who did you give it to? What are you talking about? You said you made a good dinner last night. Any joke of yours that has to have that much wait time? It's not a good joke. Um, <laughs> it was actually good. I made the Pioneer Woman's Cowboy Quiche. And I, I did actually follow the directions to a T, um, which I normally don't do. Normally when I follow directions, I'm like, eh, I know better than Rachel Ray. I've been doing this longer. Um, but I followed it to, a, to the letter. You said Rachel Ray, 30 minutes. I'm going to do it in 20. <laughs> you're, yeah, 30 minute meal with Rachel Ray. Try three and a half hours with Melissa Ray. <laughs> so I did the Pioneer Woman's Cowboy Quiche. My daughter went back for thirds. Everybody else had seconds, except for Rocco, because you, you know what? You could dip this house in chocolate and deep fried. He, was, he still wouldn't be happy with it. So um, we loved it. The cowboy quiche is really, really simple to make. So there's a good suggestion for you guys if you're like us. You're cooking a lot on quarantine, and you're just freaking sick of all of the things. So that was a new recipe that I had never tried before. Um, David, did you give it to somebody? Gave it to your little buddy down here, didn't you? Mm -hmm. He lapped it right up. In just case y'all know, I'm, I'm actually I'm actually stomach. rubbing his stomach, so the uh, the camera wasn't low enough to catch that, so it looked awkward. <laughs> um, I love Pioneer Woman recipe. Somebody said, um, "Ooh, somebody made hobo dinners." Oh, I love hobo dinners. Aren't those so easy? They're so easy, and you can make them. A hobo dinner, if you don't know, is a for, well for us. I guess you could do it any way you wanted, but for us, it's a big piece of ground meat, like a big hamburger patty. We put it on foil, on, in a piece of foil, and then we just top it, whatever is specific to that person. So Remy's will have potatoes, tons of broccoli in there. That's what she likes. I'll sprinkle in a little bit of corn. David's will have potatoes, lots and lots of onion, no other vegetable. Um, so we just kind of make it, Rocco's will have potatoes and corn. We'll just make it specific to us. Season it all up, put in a little bit of Worcestershire, tighten that foil at the top and let it cook. For a little while in the oven super simple everybody gets what they wanted and hobo dinners are good pioneer woman recipes never fail me they never do she is like the epitome i love them and they're easy and this one was really really good it's called cowboy quiche and just so y'all know she shows you how to make your own crust for it your own pie crust eh -eh. i bought a marie calendar's pie crust and as my granny said does it matter because we're all going to go to heaven happy <laughs> Um, all right, here we go. We are here for, we're here for you Wednesday, where we take your questions, of which there were many. There were many. So listen to me. Please don't write me and be offended that your question did not get answered. We are answering the ones that we like the best. 
from the people that we like the best. That's a lie. I'm kidding you. I, I literally, I think maybe one of these questions, did I, could I even, did I even know the person? And by that, I mean, I just see their name a lot. Um, that's, we, we literally go by what we have time for and what we feel like is the most relevant kind of to, to, I don't know. I don't know. How do we pick them? Mm, I kind of close my eyes and just go. <laughs> All right. So we are actually going to do it a little differently. I felt like last week we, we had some kind of funny ones and then we ended with the nursing student who we freaking outed to her parents that she didn't even want to be a nurse after they paid all this money for her to go to school. Well, that was her, her plan. It, she, yeah, she duped us and it worked. Um, that was kind of a serious one. We ended with that one. We're going to start with a serious one and then we're going to get to some, some lighter ones. Um, maybe not lighter to the people who sent them. The people that sent them are like, that's not a light question. I was serious. But this one's kind of heavy and I'm going to read it to you guys and I'm not going to share names unless they said I could. Uh, but I, what? What did you just do? Nothing. I can't have you doing that behind my back. I didn't. Somebody, somebody said whoop whoop, class of 92. And so I just gave them be present. I, Be present. I was so present, I saw that they whoop whooped. Be present with me. Okay, can I come live with y'all? That's what we think Pauline Blankenship said. She, she, she about have said, can I come live with y'all? Yes to both. Um, Baby, come, come to me. me. Let, Let me, me put, put my, my arms, arms around you. Oh, and now you're getting involved. No, in I'm it. not involved. I might as well just join in. If you can't beat them, join them. And I can't beat you. I tried. Why are all the happy faces going up? Mm -hmm. This is kind of a serious question, and I really do want y'all's take on it. Are you ready? Um, I really need some non biased advice. I have a 21 year old daughter. She is amazing. She is kind. She's beautiful, smart, talented. This mama is a little bit partial, okay? Um, she's a, she's a super extrovert. She loves to serve people, help people. She's got a good job. She loves a schedule. Okay. So, so far, so far we got a great kid. Okay. We've got a great kid. She's 21. She's a kid still, but she's a great kid. Mama loves her. Here's the problem. She will not stay home. She has begged, talked, yelled, cried, explained all of it. None of it works. She's hanging out with her friends. She's going to their houses. She's attending their barbecues. She thinks it's because it's the only four people that she's fine. And she says, well, these are mostly the only people that I've hung out with, so I'm fine. Now, the mom who is writing goes on to say that she has, I have rheumatoid arthritis, which is an autoimmune disease. So I've tried explaining how dangerous it is her going out for me. I'm a childcare teacher, and even though we're still open, I chose to take leave because of the risks. Okay, but she just isn't getting it. The other night I took her house key and told her if she left again, she couldn't come back until it was over and she left and I broke down. For two nights, I sat up crying and broken. My heart was literally broken. How as a mother can I send my baby out into this world right now? But how can I get her to see how serious this is? Am I just not willing to die for my child? I've spent my entire life putting her health before mine. Why should now be any different? I let her come back. It's been 24 hours and we're doing okay. I've tried planning a few things for us to do, so hopefully that helps, but what if it doesn't? What if she decides she needs to see her friends again? Okay. <clears throat> First of all, I feel for this mama. I feel for her. She's 21. You can't exactly ground her, right? Mm -hmm. You love your kid. They're a good kid, but they are not making wise decisions. I think we probably don't have to state the obvious, which is at 21 years old, they are so self-involved and that doesn't make them a bad person. But at 21, their world is centered around them. So she has not taken mama's health into consideration. And I'm curious as to what you guys might suggest. We're a pretty logical sound group and I would love to see what you guys' suggestions are. David, what do you think? I mean, well, we're getting a lot of people saying um, uh, we're getting a lot of people say that, that that's happening a lot of places and that they've heard that um, she's an adult. Uh, it's hard to understand why they do what they do. That uh, and we got somebody that just said she should respect her mom. We know this. We know this. And here's the thing: she probably adores her mom. She probably loves her mama like that. Mama loves her. 
but she isn't making wise decisions. Um, and I, and I, I don't know what the answer is. But this mom, I feel, has to take full care of herself. She's got rheumatoid arthritis. Her immune system is probably shot. She's got to take care of herself. And if that means quarantining yourself in your room and sadly letting her have the run of the house and she just can't come in your room, maybe then and only then will she see the importance of this. I can't even get next to my mama for the next 14 days. No, you can't. But that was a choice you made. I'm not crazy about that idea because okay, she's giving up her home. She's giving up her whole home and, you know, locking herself in a room because her daughter's not, you know, doing what she should be doing. I understand it's a parent and our kids are still, still young. So I'm not going to talk about something that we have, you know, personal experience with, but I do think at, at some point you have to transition from, um, parenting a child. I mean, like a very young child and parenting an adult and yeah, 21 is a hard age and Lord, we all make decisions when we're younger that we look back on and, and can't believe how selfish we were or wrong we were. Um, but I do think that it's, it's, it's time for her to take care of herself. If her daughter's not in that space, that means she's a bad person or anything like that. But I think having her leave the house, I think that was a, a wise decision. I mean, I did too. It's, it's and sad, honestly, but... a lot of people are saying that they're saying that if you leave the house, I'm going to, I'm going to take your key and you're not getting in for two days. And, and I'm just going to say to this mama who sent this, a lot of people are saying that was, that was wise. Um, and, he, and here's the tricky thing, you know, about, okay, well, she's been gone a couple days. I'll let her back. You know, what happened in those two days right. that wasn't safe, that she might have been exposed to somebody with asymptomatic? A, symptomatic. A, they were you can't asymptomatic. say it. You can't say it better. Asymptomatic. Very good, um, honey. Very good. And so she may <laughs> come back in the house. She doesn't have any, you know, signs yet. And she actually brings it back into the house. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? So it's kind of hard to let her continue to so to the to lady that wrote us that letter um we actually agree we agree with you ha asking her to leave um now on the up chance maybe that she watches this that you say hey they read my letter and i want you to see it i would just i would want to say this to her i get it i get it i am a social extrovert times one million this is killing me now, granted, I'm also a mother of two young kids, so I didn't really have a life to begin with. But you do, and you're 21, and you sound amazing, and of course you want to socialize. I get that. I will just tell you this. I am real close to my mom. Now, she lives in a house across town, but I'm really close to her. And I finally got to see my mother after 17 days of not seeing her at all. We had my mother take a COVID test because my mother has a very, very low immune system due to, you ready for this? arthritis. She's got the same thing your mother has. So they had to give my mother a COVID test when it came up negative. Um, and my mother had been self quarantined for, I guess, three weeks. And we had been, and we had been, I went over to see my mother, but I only saw her on the back porch. We sat at a distance. We were on the back porch. We never went inside together. Um, and, and here's we haven't why. seen him since. And we haven't seen I him mean, since. Just... Here's why. Because even though I want to be social, I will never forgive myself if something happened to my mother. And I could have stopped it. I will never forgive myself. And it sounds like you have the same kind of relationship with your mom. So I would just say, if you happen to be watching this, you will never, ever, ever forgive yourself for that. You'll never live it down. You'll never th stop thinking about it, that you could have done something, but you did nothing. So just maybe think about that, okay? How do y'all feel about that? Um, and if Jimmy Fallon <clears throat> and Justin Timberlake are staying homes and writing songs about it. You can too. You can too. What if you end up being the next like what if what if getting you social butterfly in your house caused you to be the next Beyonce? It probably won't. But what if it did? Okay. You find all your creativity? Let me tell you something. Beyonce wasn't built in a day. Okay. That's a t shirt Remy has that she wears it all the time. It's adorable. <laughs> Beyonce wasn't built in a day. Okay? She was built during the quarantine. You don't know what you got. All right, here we go. The next one. Stop talking behind my back. I'm, a, I'm. It's not going well for us today. Um, it's about to be. I'm here for you Wednesday, and not we're here for you Wednesday. Here we go. 
Uh, she actually asked that we not use her name, so I'm not going to use her name. My name is blank, and I'm writing this for my daughter, who is 23. Okay. About a year ago, she's dating a guy. This is for the daughter. The mother's just sending it in. Okay, so chances are what we've got here is another case where the daughter's like, I don't watch those old people, but the mother does, so she's sending us the question on behalf of the daughter. So her daughter was dating a guy. They thought he was the one. They dated for over a year, and then out of the blue, out of the blue, he tells her that the Lord... <laughs> I love that we did that together. That the Lord has told her she is not the one for him. Okay. Told him he's not. The one. Yes, the Lord told him you're not the one. And I mean, I don't, I don't. And she says, now he is crying. He is snot balling out of his eyes, telling her that it's not me, it's God. He's telling me this. Two months later, two months go by. We don't get hit. Can we out him? We don't. We, we don't, don't get, get his name. name. I would. I doubt. I doubt him. So about two months later, he texts her and he told her, I messed up. I messed up and I want to work this out. God's not God. I'm, I am me, but God is not. I, he didn't say all that, but I want to work it out. You give God a, a bad, bad, name. Name. bad name. So they continue to talk and act, now see, if you're going to contribute like that and it's going to be creative, that's fine. But when you continually go to your R&B rhythms of 1982, like the Lord looked us up where we belong, that's not okay. Anyway, they continue to talk, and after about a week or so, she asks him when they're going to see each other in person and talk it out, like a normal person, Sean. That's not his name, but let's just call him that. <clears throat> hey, Sean, yeah, we're talking now, and I don't know what's up, but can we, like, see each other in person, or are you a monk? Have you become a Catholic priest at this point? Are you, are you doing tent revivals? God's still talking to you? What you doing, Sean? Can we meet up? Okay, he tells her soon, but when the time comes, he gives her excuse after excuse why he can't, okay? So they continue to talk or text for three more months, and then one day, Sean just ghosts her. What? He just ghosts her. Doesn't return calls, doesn't return texts. He's just, he gone, okay? He gone, and she sees on Facebook that he is in a relationship with a girl and a girl he's known for quite a while. So here's the question. The question is, do you think he was talking to both of them at the same time? And if she sees him out in public, should she speak to him? Oh, she We're going to break this down into two parts, she okay? Speak to him. The first question was this. Do you think that he was talking to both of them at the same time? David, I'm going to ask you to shake your head one direction or the other based off of how you feel. Go. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. He most definitely was. He What's was that? There's a pop song called uh, God Was a Woman or God Was a Woman. <clears throat> it's Ariana Grande of God Was a Woman. I don't know why you're bringing it up now. Because uh, this little girl that Sean was seeing on the side is who was the God telling him that his time was over with that other girl. That is a filthy song. Oh, it is? It doesn't at all mean what you think it means. That's why I don't know. That's why I didn't know. And I can't believe you brought it up. And you brought it up in a context where someone at, like, probably at, it's, there's nothing you've done on this show, present or past, that's been more inappropriate than what you just did right there. Sorry. I, I literally have just heard that line. I don't know anything else. It's something about, if God was, I'm not even going to, you, you need to look at, I hope your mother's not on here. God knows she's Googled it already. <laughs> <clears throat> so, yeah, he was talking to someone else. What's going on here? He was. And if, if she sees him in public? No. Oh, yeah, she should talk to him. You let me handle this one, David. Yeah, he was seeing somebody else. He was probably talking to her. It's what we call weighing our options, okay? He was weighing his options. And I don't know why Marcy came out ahead of Gloria. I don't know, okay? All I know is Sean's a snake, and you're never going to deal with him again. But I want to tell you something, daughter. Gloria, I think is what I called her. Let me tell you something, Gloria. All of our lives, one thing that we all mutually have in common, we're all from different places, different backgrounds, different socioeconomic backgrounds, different colors, different sizes, but there's one thing we all have in common. Every single one of us, at one time or another, have walked away from a situation and hours later said, dang it, why didn't I say blank? Dang it, I should have said this. Dang it, I should have thought of that. Oh, that would have been a great comeback. We've all done it. You, Gloria, have the chance that all of us have never had. You have the chance. 
You have the chance right now to formulate what it is you going to say. And let me tell you something, Gloria, you going to say it. So right now, Get out your journal, get out your pen, and I want you to write down a line that would literally make every one of us give you the Arsenio Hall hands. Here's what that is. I want you to do it. I want you to write down an incredible line. I want you to practice it. I want you to memorize it. I want you to put inflection in your voice, okay? And then I want you to prepare for the day when you see him. And when you see him, I want you to unbutton the top button of your dress, okay? I want you to slap your cheeks. They got a little color in them. Get that cleavage up. And I want you to walk over to him, Gloria, and I want you to deliver that line. And I want you to deliver it like a champ, okay? And then you turn around and walk away. There you go. There's my answer. Moving on. If everybody agrees with that. We do have a couple people having to jump off because it's lunch. <laughs> well, I'm sorry. I got on a roll about that, David. And you know it was good advice. It was good advice. <laughs> it was very good advice. Remember, unbutton, cleavage up, got your line, walk up, deliver it, walk away. And when you walk away and you turn around, call me. I want to know how it went. All right. Uh, everybody's liking it. Everybody's liking it. Oh, he's going to get it. I swear to God, I will help you formulate a line. Okay. Um, next is a woman who comes to us today, and I'm not gonna go into the whole thing, but the woman wants a dog, y'all. She wants a dog, and her husband's telling her no. Now, I'm sorry, but okay, I'm not. Well, here's part of I'm it. I'm not gonna get my I know you're not gonna, Yeah. I know you're not gonna read all of it, but here's part of it. Uh, back in 2016, they were very close to getting a dog, mm -hmm. <clears throat> but he decided he wanted another baby instead, so they had another baby in 2017. So, mm. I'm by no means saying a dog is, you know, over a baby. But he did agree to it at one point. And then they got pregnant. And then she got pregnant, which she agreed to. Mm. And still, now, four years later, there's, you know, he's leading her on about the dog, but he's not willing to. So many puns I could make about dog, doggy style, all of it. I could do, I could do so many things. I could riff on it. I could riff on that. Okay. <clears throat> Here's what she said. So we did, we got pregnant and Henry was born. Oh, okay. Her, her son was born and then he promised me, my husband promised me we would be ready in 2019. 2019 gone. It's gone. We're at 2020. We're stuck at home and we want to be stuck at home with a dog. So I got a girlfriend who breeds golden retrievers, right? And she's got seven puppies. And I tell my husband, can I please have a golden retriever puppy? Now here's the thing. She's not asking for some Yep, 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 little hairless, ugly thing. She's asking for a golden retriever. It's America's pet. It's America's pet. Where's Nash? We need a prop. We need a prop. He's outside. Okay, what in the world? It's America's pet. There's no possible way it won't love your children and it won't love your husband, although he sounds like a real douche. <laughs> oh, don't kick me under the table. The man's saying no to a dog and he got kids. Okay. <clears throat> he's probably not a douchebag. He's probably a wonderful guy. It's just like, I don't want to buy that expensive dog food. Some, I would say that some uh, kids, I would actually trade a golden retriever for. I, we read this question last night and David goes, I wish I'd picked out two golden retrievers and left one of our kids. <laughs> Chris Remy had just gotten in trouble really bad for her attitude. I will say when we got uh, Nash, I wish we would have got two. I still, yeah. I still to this day wish we would have got two. I think they would have played together well and entertained each other, but we would really sound like we're talking about another kid. Um, but anyway, here, here's the deal, though. What does she do? I mean, I don't. I, I, I bet I would love your husband. I probably would. I always get along better with men sometimes than even women. But uh, well, I look, probably would love him. He's not a douchebag. I hope he can laugh at that. You but, actually have <clears> a very specific, directly related example of this in our in our life. What is it? No more cats. No more cats. I love them. They're fine. We got two outside. They're great. No more cats. What's that over there? My cat, Frankie Jane. Hey, girl. Hey. I had clearly <clears throat> told her no more cats. And guess who loves Frankie Jane? Her and Remy went and got Him. the cat. I wasn't too excited the first 30 minutes, <clears throat> but I got over it really quick. Here's the thing. I don't want her to... Uh, her husband's probably her best friend, and I don't want her to disrespect him or do anything behind his back. But if you are going to do something behind your husband's back, getting a golden retriever is not a bad thing. I would go and get it. I would just say, 
uh, honey, there's some, there's another family that wants it. And I wouldn't lie about that. I would see if I would tell the, the breeder have another family lined up, but we want to take him home. We want to test run this for, for two weeks. We just want to give it two weeks and just see, I guarantee, and tell him that, say, it's here, here it is. We're gonna keep him for two weeks, okay? If you don't want him, there's another family lined up. Give it two weeks, I guarantee you he changes his mind. That's what I would do. That's actually good. That's, good. That's what I would do. And as long as he knows that at, that at the end of that two weeks, there is another family, and you're not gonna have lied to him and been like, I was kidding, there's not another family. <laughs> no, have another family lined up. And I would like to give you another family right now, okay? If he does not want that golden retriever. They live a very, very long way from How me. do you know where they live? I do. You don't know where they live. I do. David, anything can happen. We could drive and meet halfway. Uh, no, we couldn't, actually. Whisper in my ear where they live. Because I swear to you, David, we will take that dog girl. No, David! You're literally naming the state that's the most furthest away. No, I'm not. Wait, I don't know. David, then they don't. You're speaking it up. They don't, why would, are you doing that? I would take a. I would take another golden today. They could put that dog to sleep. And fly here. <laughs> okay. What? Well, usually when you say you put a dog to sleep, they don't ever wake up. So. Oh no, I didn't mean that. I just meant give him a little. Said it. Night night. And fly him here. I would take that dog from you. I would. I promise you. I would take that dog. Okay. All right. So there we go. Um, the last one is a mom who uh, has several kids and blended family, doing great. She loves those, those stepkids too. They're just all blended up and mixed together. But she is having a problem with looking over all the time and the son who is, I believe she said 11, age of our son, always has his hand down his pants. Always, always. Always. What does she do? I'm a mom of an 11-year-old, and if you think I can, I know what to tell you, you wrong. I don't, so I don't think Rocco does it like he used to. Let's, let's, uh, <laughs> like he used to. So moms of boys, what do y'all say? What do you say? Because I have to tell you, immediately when I read this, other than busting out laughing, okay, my um, straight, white, laced, charismatic, Christian, evangelical, Protestant church, I don't know what any of those words even mean, um, came out in me, and I'm like, oh no. Do y'all remember the song? I don't want anybody else when I think about you. I ah, no, David, don't say that! That's bad! Do y'all remember that song? that came out like, I don't know, a hundred years ago. I don't want anybody else Ooh, when I, I think, think about, about you, you I, myself. And so I, I would make David sing it like this. When I think about you, I T-O-U-C-H myself. Because we don't say that. We don't say that and we don't sing it, okay? So, poor Sabrina who just got here from Pullman, Washington. Oh. Speaking of Pullman, Sometimes. <laughs> I'm a loose cannon. Okay, I'll say a couple of things. First of all, <laughs> it is. Okay, the other day, I was talking to my. Okay, this is not name dropping. Uh, you may not know her, you may know her. I was talking, I had my friend, Jen Hatmaker, was on the phone with me. And she said, this is what she said at the beginning of our conversation. But can I trust you? But can I trust you? You know you are a bit of a loose cannon. <laughs> I was like, what are you talking about? And then I say Pullman, Washington, based off of this poor mom. Can't get her son to get his hands down his pants. Now I know what she means. Okay. Um, two, there's two, two things here. One, this is a stepson. <clears throat> uh, so that does add a little interesting thing where, you know, it, the mom, hey, hey, dad, can you go talk, you know, so I get that, uh, and and to be honest, even we we dealt with it a little bit. You'd prefer I dealt with it, although you dealt with it as much, I guess. Yeah, but like this. No, 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 <laughs> no, no, sir. Go wash. Go wash. That's how I dealt with it. But I but I will say, especially at that age, and to be honest, not personally, but I know some. Uh, what was his name? Al Bundy. 
Al Bundy. You never watched one episode of Married with Children? No, but I do. I just he always had his hand he on just, the fence. Yeah, so it's it's not so much a like that song talks about. It's more really of a comfort type thing. It's I got. Uh, I got. I got to tell you what we would do in our house. Or a fidge, a fidge. The Radkeys. Okay, look, we don't have it all together, but together we have it all. That's terrible. Um, we we make light of things. We we laugh. We pick. We tease. And I think she said that she kind of does that. So I I would begin singing that song every time I saw him. I would be like, when I think, you know, like I don't know what his name is, Brent. Let's say his name is Brent. When Brent thinks about him, <laughs> you know, I don't. I would just sing that song. Um, I would make up a song that I would sing every time. It would tickle him. It would make him laugh. It would embarrass him just enough that he might actually stop doing it. But we do have a lot of moms that are on here saying eventually it just it goes away. They just they stop doing it. Um, it's probably gotten to be a little bit of a habit, and he'll he'll stop it. They're just growing hey, up. I wonder it's if normal. He's, I wonder if he's in sports and they have a cup in the house because it could be funny because she could toss it to him like you know this is to protect you know Pullman. <laughs> <laughs> Do you remember and then, when Rocco was on second base and his third base coach? Was, was his last name was Johnson? And you told Rocco, Let's look for Mr. Johnson. And when Mr. Johnson tells you to run, run to Mr. Johnson. And Rocco goes, I'm getting conflicting messages. <laughs> he went, I'm getting conflict. What? <laughs> run to Mr. Johnson. All right. That is our question lineup for We're Here For You Wednesday. I want to end with somebody who wrote me this. This is not a question, but... Mandy, I love you so much. You know who I'm talking to right Mandy. now? Sing it, baby. You came and you gave without taking, but I sent you away, oh, Mandy. Well, you held me and stopped me from shaking. Wasn't that about a golden? I think it was about a golden retriever. That's what everybody oh. says. I don't know. It. Yeah, because it was Barry Manilow. Uh, nope, keep on going. Okay, so let's get back to Mandy. Nope, back to Mandy. Okay. Can I say anything about Pullman? Okay. So Mandy, <laughs> she sent some help for Melissa. One thing me and my bestie have done since this whole quarantine mess has started is meet up at our local mom and pop coffee shop. Kid free. They're doing takeout orders to stay afloat. So we kill two birds with one stone. We help a small business and we keep our sanity. We call in our order. We grab our food and we sit in our parking lot in our own cars and we eat and we drink coffee and we catch up face to face. So like the windows are right there. We police, aren't breaking police any Police officers have done that for years. We aren't breaking any rules. <laughs> Getting food is essential. Can I get a what what? And we're six feet apart in our own space. If the attorney general will allow you out of the house, go do it. It gives me something to look forward to and you get out of the house. That is our tip for the day. That is that. wonderful. And I'm going to call one of my best friends right now and say, let's just go to Starbucks. We'll pull through. We'll get coffee. And then we'll just go sit in the parking lot and we'll just talk to each other. Um, that, there you go. There's your great tip. We're here for you Wednesday. We are the Radkeys and we don't really know what we're talking about, but we have a lot of fun doing it. So thank you for giving us your problems and your issues. We love you and your family. And please name that golden retriever Mandy. <laughs> I think it's a female. That would be so perfect, David. <laughs> Hey, email Melissa at MelissaRadke.com for questions for next Wednesday. And shout outs for and Friday. And shout out Friday. All right. Anything else? Good? Uh -uh. Share, share, share. See you guys tomorrow. Even you, Pullman, Washington. <laughs>